continuing in a series called Go and Make Disciples, Making Disciples, What's Your Go? And uh, we've had a few uh, sessions of that already. And um, this morning I've been asked to carry on uh, in that series. And um, I just was, uh, before I start, I had this, uh, I was reminded of um, a story, I suppose, but um, I'm reminded of electric cars. And, um, and as I was preparing, um, I was thinking of electric cars. And, um, you know, um, I saw one whiz by. And I about you, but I, I've been so used to kind of, as I go to step across the road, I'm kind of listening as well as looking. You know, you're taught, look left and right, and, um, but you're not taught, look left and right and listen. But you do, don't you? You listen out for cars. But now you've got to look left and right and not listen because you can't hear them, right? Um, and I've heard that um, in the beginning when the electric cars were released, that they, they realised this that they didn't have much of a sound, so they actually put a sound in. And for some of them, they've got like these little speakers that make the sound so that you can hear them, you know, and it's kind of crazy, isn't it? And, uh, but yeah, it's... Um, what I find with electric cars as well is that you're seeing um, charging points popping up everywhere, aren't we? And, uh, you know, it used to be, oh, yeah, just stick the petrol in, but now it's like, oh, just plug the electric car in and it gets powered up and the batteries are getting bigger and bigger, the distances are getting longer and longer. And, um, and as people I've looked that are, are kind of looking to buy electric cars, they're saying, well, how far does it go on one charge? It goes 368 miles. OK, I want to wait until it gets that little bit longer. But the, the key to these electric cars, right, is that they need to be charged. They need to be plugged in. They need to, and, and my dad takes overnight. Some cars can be charged up in a couple of hours. But you see, they are empowered by electricity to get from A to B, right? So we want to go on a journey, you've got to power it up. And a friend of mine, he was going from Hereford to Wembley, and he, he had to work out where am I going to park my car to charge it up so I can come back. But he had planned his journey from A to B, from B to see. They, the car was empowered to take them on a journey, right? And you might be thinking, okay, Dan, why are you talking about electric cars right now? You're meant to be opening up the Bible. And uh, what I wanted to say is that actually we are called to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to get from A to B. We, we're talking about uh, Matthew 28. Here we go. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. It's up on the screen there. The Great Commission, we call it. But actually, before we can go, we need that empowerment. And, and this morning, um, I wanted to kind of talk about that. Because you see, we, we've heard some great stories already. Some great, we call them testimonies of uh, people's go. I know Tracy shared last week about her go. And we've heard of different stories of people's go and how they're reaching out. But just like today's Tesla, we need empowerment before we go. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, I need empowerment. If you're looking online, just type that on the comments section. You see, all going and making disciples is in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad about that, because sometimes we can get overwhelmed about the, the mission in front of us. Say, well, what, what, I've got nothing, Lord. What, 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 how, how do I do this? And he empowers us to do it. And, and we have a look here um, in Acts 1.58. 58, 1, 5 to 8. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. On you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. For those of you who might be thinking baptism, okay, I understand baptism. That's the whole dunk in the water and come out and you know, praise Jesus and all of that. You know, that. That's baptism, right? But actually, when you, when you look at the word baptism, what it means is to be immersed. To be totally covered, to, to almost be overwhelmed. You know, when, when we're putting people into that baptism water, we're getting them right underneath. They are totally covered, totally surrounded. We do bring them back up, yeah, depending on how naughty they've been, Tim. You know, we might leave them down there a bit longer, but yeah, we do bring them up. But they are immersed. They do come back out, but they come back out different. And when it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit here, it's talking about being totally immersed, totally covered. Something that comes upon you, comes within you, but it actually makes you different. 
and it's an empowerment. So um, we, can, we also see, so we see that the Holy Spirit, this baptism of the Holy Spirit is a soaking, is a covering, is almost an overwhelming. But we also see that this Holy Spirit that the Bible talks of is a gift from Father God. It's a gift from Father God. So the disciples aren't making it up. They're not going, well, wouldn't it be great if we just made up this like, lovely feeling that we have every now and then. Let, let's make, no, it was the Father through Jesus saying, I'm giving you this gift. And we see from Scripture that, that this gift is to empower us. It's to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. Well, what do you mean witnesses, Danny? What does that mean? Well, basically it means we're to talk about Jesus to people. And actually, God gives us the power to talk about Jesus to people, with people, to share Jesus with people. So we're empowered to share Jesus, to make disciples. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit today, because there might be some of you here or some of you online, you might think, okay, yeah, Holy Spirit, we kind of know that, you know, he's in a prayer that we pray, we, we believe in the Trinity, but, but who is this Holy Spirit? What's, what's it all about? So, you know, like with every, every gift that you're given, you need to receive it, right? If my mum and dad give me a birthday present, I've got to actually receive it and take it on board and open it. It's no good saying thank you very much, but I don't touch it ever. It's not really good, and I might offend them. But you see, from the moment that we are born again, from the moment that we choose to follow Jesus and make him Lord of our lives, we receive the Holy Spirit into our lives. In that moment, we are kind of saying, yep, to Jesus, we're saying yep to Father God, and we're saying yes to the Holy Spirit, because they are one. We receive him. We have everything we need from that moment, all the resources that we need to do everything that God wants us to do. In that moment where we've come to him, we have all the tools in our toolbox. It's there. It's within us. He's with us. We're ready to rock and roll. And you know, these resources, these tools that we talk about are called spiritual gifts. The Bible talks about them, the spiritual gifts. And actually, if you look back at our preaching archive online, we have talked a lot about those over the years. So I'd encourage you to jump on, search, and have a look for spiritual gifts, because that's not really what my message is going to be about today. But you see, I think before we can understand the work of the Holy Spirit, we need to actually take some time to get to know him. We need to take some time. So one of the most significant teachings, one of the most significant times in my life as a Christian was when I read and was taught about this. This this guy, R.A. Torrey, he said this. It will come up on the screen. A frequent source of error and fantasism about the work of the Holy Spirit is the attempt to study and understand his work without first coming to know him as a person. You see, there's a Greek word that that when they talk about the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, the New Testament is is Greek. We translate it into our language so that we can understand it. And there's a word uh, for the Holy Spirit, and it's ekinos. Ekinos. I hope I'm saying that correctly. But it's a masculine pronoun, and it's used of him in the Greek. You see, Jesus and the New Testament writers refer to the Holy Spirit as a person. As a person. You see, and I've known this from very early on in my walk as a Christian. And it's transformed, it transformed, and he continues to transform my life. You see, I would wake up every morning. After I found out he was a person, I'd wake up every morning. I'd say, good morning, Holy Spirit. And I've been talking to him ever since. And I've been walking with him ever since. And I remember uh, saying to Kate the other day, um, I, was, um, I would find that I was uh, reading the Bible and, um, and I would be confused about what it meant. You know, I, just before work, I'd be reading the Bible, and I'd be like, I've got no idea what this is. Holy Spirit, what can you, can you help me with this? Because I really don't understand it. Then I'd go to work, and I remember I'd be stacking the shelves. I used to sell trainers at a sports store, and I'd be stacking the shelves. And I remember, you know, this one scripture that I was looking at, and I just really didn't understand. And, and, and I was just putting a pair of Nike Airs back up on the shelf. Size 7, I think, something like that. And I was putting it in. And then suddenly, bam, I had the understanding of what that scripture meant. I hadn't been thinking about it, but suddenly I just had it. And I felt so encouraged. I I wanted to leave work and go home and read my Bible. And as soon as I got home, I opened up the Bible, looked at the scripture. I went, yes, of course that's what it means. The Holy Spirit, he wants to walk with us. He wants to talk to us. He wants to lead us. 
He answered my questions. He shaped my dreams. I've had many dreams where he's brought prophetic direction um, to my life um, and to the life of others. So my point is that you can know the Holy Spirit personally. Not just as an impersonal influence. Not just a good feeling or a spark of God every now and then. We can know him as a person. And there's so much scripture that I can just put out there, but I'm going to send it to the life groups for you to have a look at. If you're not in a life group, please join up a life group. You can go online, you can sign up, you can join up on a life group. If you're not quite ready for that yet, I can give you my preaching notes so you can have a look at the scriptures because there's so many. But as you see, it says the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit has intelligence. Acts 16, 7, the Holy Spirit has a will. Um, Isaiah 63, 10, Ephesians 4, 30, it says that the Holy Spirit has emotions. In 2 Corinthians 13, 14, Holy Spirit is God. He's divine. Uh, Matthew 3, 16 to 17, talks about Holy Spirit being a person. But more than just that, we know that he was promised by Jesus that he would be our counsellor, our helper, our instructor, our advocate. In other words, he's like our cheerleader. He's ready, come on, you can do it. And he points us to Jesus all the time. You can do it with Jesus. You can do it with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is our friend, but he is also God. Can you just turn to your neighbour and say, Holy Spirit is God. Thank you. So because Holy Spirit is God, Holy Spirit has the attributes of God as well. So the characteristics. So uh, the same attributes as Jesus and Father God, but just different roles. So he has life. Romans 8, 2 says the Holy Spirit has life for us. John 16, 13, Holy Spirit brings us to a place of, of truth. He has truth. Romans 15, 30, Holy Spirit is love. Ephesians 4, 30, Holy Spirit is holy. Okay, Hebrews 9, 14, Holy Spirit is eternal. Psalm 30, uh, 139, 7, he's omnipresent, so he's everywhere all the time. Holy Spirit is omniscient, if I say that right. Romans 8, 27. He knows everything, just like God. And whilst I was worshipping, I thought, isn't it great that God loves me even though he knows everything (laughs) about me? Because I'm not always great. I'm not always getting it right. But he still loves me anyway. I was just just smiling about that as I was waving my flags. Holy Spirit is this incredible being. He's God. And he rests upon us. And he lives within us. And, and, he, and all he ever wants to do is just keep promoting Jesus. It's not about him. We're not to worship Holy Spirit, so to speak. He's not wanting us to worship him. He's saying, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Never draws attention to himself. In fact, John 16, 14 to 15, he, this is of the Holy Spirit. He will glorify me because it, is from, uh, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So Jesus came down to represent Father God and he showed us Father God in action, God with us. God, Jesus has been ascended up into heaven and he has sent us the Holy Spirit who is pointing us to Jesus. So they're kind of pointing us to one another. It's fantastic. Some of you might think, well, hold on a minute. How has God got different roles? Well, you know... I've got different roles, you've got different roles. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a friend, I'm an uncle, I'm an employee, I'm a leader, I'm someone that's to be be led by someone. There's many roles that I have. God has many roles too. And the Holy Spirit empowers and guides us in our witness and in our service. So in Acts 4, the Spirit gave the apostles boldness to proclaim the gospel. We see it. As soon as they've received the Holy Spirit in power... They were suddenly talking in different languages and sharing Jesus. And they were like, this is crazy. They're saying the things of God in our own language. And this was before the days of Google Translate. They were doing it in the moment, quicker than Google Translate can do now. Speaking of the things of God in the moment. You see, when we talk about Jesus, when we share Jesus, in whatever context that may be, whatever your go looks like, And I want to say, be encouraged by the stories that people share about their goes and how they're reaching out. Be encouraged by that, but do not be condemned. It's very, very important that you understand that 
It is your go. And you need to find your go. And it may look similar to what some people have shared from the front. It may look different. We're not all called to go in the same way. We're called to different fields, um, to, to, to work with different people, to reach out to different people. So when you see, be encouraged. But you should be, and I urge you to be talking to Holy Spirit about what is your go. Is your go currently uh, reaching out to the sixth form students that you're around? Is your go that you're gaming on um, um, an Xbox, Call of Duty or whatever, and you're, you're, I remember when I was youth pastor, some of you might not agree with Call of Duty, but let's not get judge, judging here, okay? But like, some people I know have been on Call of Duty, and they've been um, on the, the headsets, and they've been, um, I remember one guy, uh, one of our youth, he was just reading the Bible through the headset whilst they were playing, and people were like, what are you doing? He was just constantly reading the Bible, it was great. But, you know, we're, we're called to be a witness. And it may be that that's your witness. I'm not prophesying here, I'm just saying. But there are many different ways, many ways that we can go. What is your go? But there's something similar about our go. And that is that we all go in the power of the Holy Spirit. We all go in the power of the Holy Spirit. He will guide our words. He will give us power to do works for Jesus. He, he may even lead us to, to see miracles happen as we pray for people, as we are reaching out to people. We may see that. But don't be alarmed if, when you do pray for somebody, something doesn't happen in that moment. I, wanted, I feel nudged by the Holy Spirit to share a story. It was whilst I was trying to learn the voice of Holy Spirit. I was in Manchester, and I remember I was walking through a park, and I turned to my mate, and I said, I'm just not sure. Is this voice that I'm hearing, is it schizophrenia, you know, is it, you know, am I going mad? And they said, well, what, what's, what's it saying right now to you? Go and pray for that person on the bench with crutches. So I was like, my friend gave me the best advice ever. Well, that's definitely biblical. <laughs> so you can line it up with that. And secondly, why don't you just go and do it and see what happens? And I was like, oh, it's really that simple. Okay, right, well, I went and did it. And I prayed for this guy and, and he didn't get healed and I felt really bad. So I invited him back for cup of tea to try and make the situation feel better and and um you know we went back and we had a cup of tea and a biscuit and in the end we got talking and this guy had walked away from church because he was freaked out by the things of the holy spirit and he had a bit of a wrong understanding and actually we were able to kind of help him in that and then the guy went back to church and then a, a, a couple of weeks later he got baptized and and it was just an incredible miracle and he still walked with crutches but the best miracle happened which is that he came back to jesus right so let's, we, we can focus on power, we can focus on healing, we know that's biblical, but let's not be disencouraged if God does things a little bit different, but let's keep going for it. I always want to be praying for healing, by the way, guys. So if we're in Christ, the Holy Spirit is in us. Having the Holy Spirit, however, does not guarantee that we will experience his power and his gifts. You see, more is required of us for that to happen. And actually, Luke uses three different Greek words when it comes to filling. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about what's required of us. So, three different words when it comes to being filled with the Holy Spirit in, in the book of Acts. Uh, Luke talks about this. So, in Acts 6, 5, he says, this, propo um, this proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Full of faith and also of the Holy Spirit. And also Philip... Uh, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, uh, Parmenius, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. You see, from this scripture, we can kind of, the, the word used there it is, talks more about a character influence by the Holy Spirit, a character quality. So this filling is more like a character quality. They saw something in Stephen in the way that he was acting because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's, it's almost like in which a, a person is habitually controlled by the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit so to speak. We often call it being led by the Holy Spirit, um, possessing a mature character. So there's something about being filled with the Holy Spirit that influences our daily walk. He wants to be involved in our daily walk to influence our character and how we approach life. So that's one of the fillings that he does. And I think that's an ongoing thing that happens day by day, minute by minute, as we look to him. Secondly, in Acts 2, 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues at the Spirit, as the Spirit enabled them. So I've talked about that. There's something about the sovereignty of God that in a moment, he just gives you an initial anointing 
that, that kind of initial anointing. Because in that moment, you, we saw that the uh, apostles were all waiting. Okay, Jesus, I don't know if they talk like this, but Jesus has promised us the Holy Spirit. We're waiting. What's going on? You know, come on, he's promised it. Come on, what's going on? Bam. Suddenly there was that initial moment, those tongues of fire. There was that initial baptism in the Holy Spirit. So there's something about the Holy Spirit walking and working in our daily lives. There's something about an anointing that he gives us in the moment um, as a one-off anointing that then empowers us to move forward. Sudden, dramatic. Uh, For those of you that are kind of looking for patterns and certain ways to pray, and and you're not going to find that when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Actually, there's no discerning pattern that he works in, really. There's, there's no uh, pattern of results. You know, one filling causes them to speak in tongues, da 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 in different languages. Another time, uh, just preaches the gospel and 3,000 people get saved. And, and there's another time, it's the Holy Spirit's like, oh, no, don't go in that direction, go in that direction. You know, there's no discernible pattern, but he does want to anoint you, does want to come upon you. And thirdly, in Acts 13.52, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. You see, the disciples' filling came as a result of their bold preaching of the word of God at certain times. So you're thinking, oh, maybe the order is, I get filled with the Holy Spirit, then I'll go and do something. You You could think that as you look at it, but actually there are times where they go and do something and the Holy Spirit fills them in the moment, sometimes at the end of the preaching of the gospel. As you seek God and walk in obedience with him, Holy Spirit will fill you. He will anoint you. Your character will be marked by his presence. And there will times he will send special anointings upon you as you're going. Also, God frequently and sovereignly filled his servants with his spirit. He did it in Acts 7, 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at his right hand. There are times where there's special service, and and sometimes we can glorify this, and really it's not about glorifying the individual. But actually, there are times when people are reaching out in an incredible special way, and he just anoints them in that moment. And Stephen, at that time, he was getting a bit of grief. Actually, if you read Acts 7, he was getting some grief. And in that moment, he saw a vision of, of God to keep him on the right path. And there are times where, where he does that in a special and almost unique way. But you won't find a pattern in the Bible or formula on how the Spirit will fall upon you. You just won't find a pattern. But in fact, Jesus said this, John 3, 8, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So you might be thinking, okay, Dan, well, where do we go from here? Okay, you've given us lots of information about how the Holy Spirit is a person. He can anoint us in different ways and different times, and there's not really a pattern, but he does want to work in your life. Where do we go from here? Well, there are four things that I want to share. Okay, very quickly, so don't worry. I want to mention, and then I'm going to take some time to pray after these four things. We're going to have a time for prayer. Okay, and for those of you at home, don't discount yourself in this moment. For those of you catching up on demand, don't discount yourself in this moment because God can work outside of time, outside of a room. He is everywhere. But there are four things I think are really important for us to focus on when it comes to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives personally. And the first one is about keeping our hearts clean. Okay, so sin, so that's disobedience to God, living, making decisions, doing things that are outside of God's will in our life is called sin, okay? Sin grieves the Holy Spirit. What I mean by grieves the Holy Spirit, basically he doesn't like it. (laughs) He's not happy about it. He doesn't want us to be disobeying God. That's not something he wants. So it's really important that we keep our hearts clean. Doesn't mean that he can't still work in our life and move in our life. But there's something about keeping our hearts clean. And we've done that this morning in having communion. Yes, it's about coming together intimately um, uh, with God and with with family. But there's that that moment where God is at Jesus when he was telling us about remembering him. It's remembering what he's done and remembering that actually he's breaking that power of sin in our life. 
And, that, and actually, uh, it says in Ephesians 4, 30, 31, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. You see, confession maintains a clean heart. Now, it's really important that when, when we're coming to communion, that we're saying, God, is there anything that is in my life that you don't like and we don't have to wait for communion to do that. We can do that every day and all the time. And there's moments in my life where I've, I have a time with the Holy Spirit where I can, I can just feel, I can just feel it within me when I'm, I'm not quite in the right place. And it's very hard to, you know, as, as you walk with the Holy Spirit, it's very hard, you know, to kind of ignore that. And, and sometimes there are moments where I have that feeling, I don't know what I've done wrong, and I just have to sit down and say, okay, Holy Spirit, what is it? that I need to put right. It's like, well, you remember that person you swore at when he cut you up in the car? That wasn't a good heart. Of course, they didn't hear you, but I heard you. Okay, God, yes, you're right. My heart needs to, yeah, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for, for doing that. You may find that yourself, but as you walk more and more with the Holy Spirit, I reckon you will do. But even if you don't have those moments, it's so important. Maybe just before you go to bed, God, is there anything I need to put right? And it might be that you've spoken wrongly to your mum or your dad. It might be that you gossiped about your friend at school. That there's always something that God, and God's not doing it from a, you naughty person. He actually wants best, the best for us. He wants us to live in a way that's best for us. And he's leading us and guiding us and shaping us. Confession makes a clean heart. So maybe right now, as we enter into prayer in a moment, you need to just take some time. Maybe the communion, you've, you've dealt with that and that's fine. Or maybe actually there's something where you're like, yes, I know God, I need to deal with this, but right now I'm not happy with that person. So I will take communion and I'm going to deal with it at some point, but not right now. Well, my challenge to you is deal with it. <laughs> deal with it. Because God wants you to be made right with, with He wants you to have a clean heart. Because he wants what's best for you. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Just like I want what's best for my boys. I want them to lead a life where they're, they're happy and they're pursuing the things that, that God's put on their heart. I want what's best for them. And there are times where I need to kind of steer them a bit. No, it's not best for you to cross the road without looking. You know, we'll have to steer him a bit. And, and God's a loving father, a good father, and he wants to steer us in our walk with him. And a part of that is confessing and keeping a pure heart. The second thing is, by faith, we can call upon the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need to understand this. We can call upon the Holy Spirit at any moment to help us, to lead us, to guide us. To ask him to anoint us. In fact, as I was um, at the back putting my mic on, I'm like... Holy Spirit, this isn't about me. This is about you. I want you to just do what you need to do this morning through me. Lead me, guide me. And it's not just about doing that as we um, step up on the stage or we lead worship. It's about doing that in every day. Holy Spirit, what is it you want to do today with me? Who is it you want me to speak to? In 1 John 5, 14, it says this. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. He will hear us and he will help us in the way that he sees fit to help us. And it might not be electricity and you suddenly fall on the floor. Oh, I've, got, I've felt you, Holy Spirit. It might just be an absolute peace and a confidence. I had to do something the other day um, that would normally kind of cause a massive amount of, of nerves and anxiety within me. And actually, I just said, God, I feel this is right. The direction I feel is right. I've prayed this through. Just, can you just be with me? Can you just help me? And I had this absolute peace and confidence that absolutely went against my nature in those situations. And he wants to do that for you. It may be that you're worried about an exam that you're facing. It may be you're worried about changing jobs. It may be that you've, your, your mortgage is going up. It may be, like recently in the news, um, the fact that the energy bills are going up and you might think how am I going to this this extra 60 quid a month how am I going to cover that well he wants to work with you in that and in those moments just oh, holy spirit help he's interested in every detail 
we already know it's God's will to fill us with his spirit because it says in Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery, so basically not good stuff. Instead, be filled with the spirit. So we know that's what God wants for us. And the first thing I want to talk about is, is that actually there's this first, there's this hunger. And um, I think it's important that we develop a first and a hunger for Holy Spirit in our lives, to work in our lives. In John 7, 37 to 39, it says, um, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. So he didn't say it quietly. He didn't just say it to a handful of people. Okay? In fact, he was at a festival and he said it in a loud voice. And if Jesus said it in a loud voice, this is really important. And if you're a Christian, you're thinking, actually, no, this Holy Spirit stuff is not for me. It, well, it's for Jesus. Because in the festival, he said in a loud voice, I'm going to shout now, so get ready. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. Are you? And if you're not, come on. God wants you to be thirsty for, he, for you to, to be filled with his Holy Spirit. He wants to give you good things. He wants to use you for good things. He wants to use you in different ways to reach those that are lost. Whoever believes me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. This is something Jesus has won because of what he did and how he approached life. It's, he's done it for us. Oh man, he just does more and more for us, doesn't he? I love this, Jesus. We're coming close to an end, by the way. Jesus is calling us to first, to desire, to seek the Holy Spirit in our lives. And finally, we need to make ourselves available. As the disciples did in Acts 1. Okay, Jesus said it's, the Holy Spirit is coming. We're available. We're available. We need to make ourselves available. I wonder if the band can come up, please. It would be great, because we're going to have a time of prayer. But, you know, as the disciples did in Acts, Acts 1, they waited. There was this initial filling of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And, uh, you know, I, I've had a pretty dramatic filling of the Holy Spirit in my life, but I know great people where it's just been an absolute peace in their lives. But actually, there's this initial filling, this initial baptism the disciples experienced it. We can experience, experience it as we surrender. And there's something about, and, and I'm reminded of um, when I first had that initial experience of the Holy Spirit in my life. I was at a, pre I was at a youth meeting. I had recently become a Christian. I felt insignificant. I was a bit of a, a chav. So for those who are thinking, what is, what is a chav? You know, I was basically one of these outsiders that people didn't like in social groups. You know, they were worried that I might mug them, stuff like that. So, you know, and I'd gone into church and, and, and I just didn't fit in. And, um, and, and I, was, I just wanted to serve. I just wanted to do whatever I could to help in whatever way, whatever it looked like. And there was this meeting of like six, 700 kids and I turn up and I was like, what can I do? And I could see them. They looked at me and were like a bit like, oh yeah, what can you do? Uh, you know, but like I was just willing to do anything, clean the toilets, whatever you want me to do. I love Jesus. I want people to meet Jesus. Previously, a couple of weeks before, I'd asked for the Holy Spirit to, to, to baptize me and I hadn't seen anything. And I, in this meeting, they said, oh, do you know what? Just just walk around the edge during the meeting and just pray. And I don't know whether that was a job that was given most of the time or they just didn't know what to do. But I just did that. I just prayed my heart out for these young people. I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I was just looking around, just I'm praying. I don't know their names, but God knows them. I'm just praying and I'm praying. And then just in that moment, about 20 minutes in, Holy Spirit came upon me. I just felt such an overwhelming joy, just crying with joy. I started praying and these different languages were coming out of my mouth. It kind of freaked me out, but made me happy as well. But in that moment, I had that initial feeling. And it came from a heart of surrender. God, use me. Do you want to be used by God to see his kingdom advance? Let's stand, guys. We're just going to pray. Because I'm conscious we're coming towards an end. It could be that you've been around the block and you, you've had that initial um, filling of the Holy Spirit, but you've not experienced him for, for a while. And I, I just want to pray for you right now. If that's you, just pray right now. Open up your heart. Surrender. The Holy Spirit, you are welcome.
Holy Spirit, thank you that you're with us. Just want to pray right now for those that have experienced it before but haven't for some time. More, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Maybe right now you've never, ever experienced that filling of the Holy Spirit, that initial filling of the Holy Spirit, what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you're watching online and that's you. Just right now, for those of you that are here, that have never experienced that, I just want you to to come to the sides here. If you come to the sides here, you're not going to be on camera, but just want to take that step of faith to say, God, I surrender. I want you in my life, Holy Spirit. If you can just walk here and people will pray with you. They'll put their hands on you and pray with you. Perhaps if you're nervous about coming to the front, maybe you want to go to the back over there. Just, Just head in that direction. There's some people that will pray with you. Maybe you want to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit as a person. You've never really had that before, and that's you this morning. If that's you, I just would love for you just to, and I'm not going to point you out, I'm not even going to be like making a note of how many people do this, but if that's you, just just put your hands ready to receive. And I'm just going to pray simply. And if that's you online, you can put your hands out, that's fine, God can see you. I just want to pray right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are wanting to work and walk in our lives. So for those people that have never experienced you before in that way, feel led by you day by day, I pray that you would start to do that, start to reveal it to them, that they would start to hear your voice more, that they would start to to learn what it is to walk with you in their lives daily. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Maybe right now you just need to cleanse your heart. Maybe you didn't do that during communion. Maybe you're watching on demand and it's three years later on YouTube, whatever, and you haven't done that. Right now, you can do that. If you know what it is, just say it. You don't have to say it out loud, say it in your mind, just take it to God. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for swearing in traffic at that person. God, I'm I'm sorry for my attitude towards my parents. God, I'm sorry for gossiping or joining in with the gossip in the lunchroom. Whatever it might be, just, just bring it to God. Say sorry. Ask him to forgive you. Do you know what? He will forgive you. I believe there's a, a couple of people here, maybe more, and you have a fear of uh, the Holy Spirit come upon you. You wonder if you'll take over. And uh, I just want to say that uh, you know God. You've known his uh, presence. You've known him speak to you. You've known him touch you. You've known him in the way that you know him. And I want to say the Holy Spirit is the same God. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, it's not some different spirit, not some strange spirit. He is the God that you know. It's not going to be a different kind of weird thing that comes to you and makes you do weird things. You will know that it's the same God. And you don't need to fear Holy Spirit because He is the God that you know. I also believe there's uh, somebody here, a lady, and uh, believe God, you know that God is touching you now to give you, uh, you'll find that you're going to speak to a family member this week, words that you think, where did they come from? Family member that doesn't know you, that you will just find that in your mouth, you've, you've, you've said the words without knowing where they're coming from. And I'm going to pray for that situation, that, that lady that you would uh, receive the Holy Spirit now and receive faith. And as you're just thinking of this family member right now, God says he'll give you the words. You don't need to uh, work them out in your head. 
You don't need to prepare them in advance. You'll find the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you've, you've spoken the words. Pray that in Jesus' name. I was just reminded as, as well, um, as Tim was bringing those uh, prophetic words, those words of wisdom, words of knowledge, um, I was reminded that there are times in my walk with the Holy Spirit where, and you've heard me say this before, those of you that have been around for a while, where I've not been able to do anything. The only thing I've been able to do is just crawl up and sit on his lap, sit on Father God's lap, and in those moments, Holy Spirit has just taken away the stress, the anxiety, where I've been in situations where I've not known what to do, where it felt like, you know, my whole world was knocked from under my feet. And you might be feeling that right now. You might even be watching online and, and you felt that way. You felt like everything has gone and you don't know what to do next. And it's in that moment, let me say to you is stop. Take a sit down somewhere, maybe lie on your bed. Remember the last time I did it, I was lying on the bed. And I was just like, Father, Holy Spirit, I just, I just need you help. And in that moment, didn't say anything to me. I didn't say anything to him. But he ju I just felt like everything that I was feeling went. And I just felt such peace. And maybe that's what you need right now.